Thank you. In other news this morning, there should be 10 million fewer prescriptions for antibiotics in England every year, according to the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. NICE, the body which advises the NHS about medicines, also says doctors and dentists who prescribed antibiotics inappropriately should face action from their regulators, as our health correspondent Jane Draper reports. The record low inflation rate in the UK could mean good news for all rail commuters today. The official figure published today will be used to determine just how much fares can rise for about half of all train journeys. Um, uh, this means lots and lots of people, Ben. As you said, it accounts for about half of all rail journeys. These are the regulated fare increases, so it means about a half lowest increase in about a decade. So great news for commuters that say they're being pushed. So it's quite a big if, if inflation stays the same. Is it... Possibly it might go up later this year? Potentially, yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. Officials in Indonesia say all 55 people on board a plane that crashed on Sunday have died. A month ago, an historic deal was reached limiting Iran's nuclear activity in return for the lifting of international economic sanctions. People in the Chinese city of Tianjin, whose homes were damaged by the huge explosions last week, have staged protests to demand compensation from the government. Thousands of apprenticeships in England should be reserved for young people coming out of care, according to the children's charity Bernardo's. Three major record companies have agreed to join a government scheme to give age ratings to music videos with violent and sexual content. And the best city in the world to live in is... <laughs> Melbourne. <laughs> well, to be honest... The... Yes. The sun wasn't shining in Melbourne that day, was Not it? Not that particular day. Do you think we could find and I, nicer pictures? I think we should feel hurt that no single British city made the top 40. I, Don't you? I entirely agree with you. And, and I... <laughs> we should write a letter of complaint. <laughs> uh, coming up to ten past six. Morning, Sally. It's pretty much the best place in Britain to live. Region-wise, yeah. Region-wise, I mm -hmm. think, because of the house prices and the beautiful countryside. Mm. Um, oh, controversial night oh. at Anfield last <sighs> night. Bournemouth fans, how are you feeling this morning? A little bit aggrieved? Perhaps. He, he, he was actually lost, was separated from his parents and ended up on the pitch. I love the way he all, too he, bothered her, didn't he? Oh, exactly. <laughs> he tackled all those players. And yeah, just... exactly. I'm not sure some of the tackling was that great, <laughs> but there you go. Yeah, he's safe and love it, all because... over the internet. I'm in character to say anything interesting. Well, Greg Rutherford in this interview says lots of interesting things. Did he talk about the vest? He talks about not having the flag on the vest, mm. all of that. He's not frightened to speak his mind. So that's a great read this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sold to the lady on my left. <laughs> eh? 21 million. Still 1.5 1. 1. million. It's got a few miles on the clock, I see. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, too many. Uh, thanks Thank very you. much. Uh, front page of the newspapers this morning. Um, quite a few of them leading with pictures uh, from Bangkok. Rescue workers there. Front page of the Guardian. Uh, the Times has a story about that as well, seeing senior Labour fans. Independent, again, that similar picture from Bangkok. Uh, the Daily Mail has the story about doctors and uh, antibiotic prescriptions. That antibiotic story also front page of the Daily Telegraph as well. This was yesterday. Um, how many species of bee can you name? I can't name well, many species. You're in the majority, as to be honest. I, I know there are it. lots of different bumblebees, for example. Yeah. People go, well, there's a honeybee. And a bumblebee. There's a bumblebee. Yes. In fact, there are all sorts of different varieties There's a common garden bumblebee, bee, presumably. All, all that sort of thing. But it's not like dogs. You know, you don't see well, them up close very often. So why would people be expected to But also, I mean, some people might not presume that was a bee. Yes, indeed. And there are hundreds of different pollinators, of course, but we won't go there. OK. There's lots, of, there's lots of bees in my garden. That's nice. <laughs> morning, Ben. I was quite into that. It was quite educational at this time in the morning. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll have a look at that later. I'm look carefully. It's um, in the Telegraph. There is a technological field to all of the papers this morning. And I want to see machines. Are uh, robots or uh, manufacturing machines killing jobs? Employee, I think. Yeah. To email the chief exec and say, look, I don't yeah. like where I'm working. There was a panorama programme about it uh, a few months ago, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, very critical of their practices. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's uh, 18 minutes past six. Are oh, you watching Breakfast from BBC News? Main stories here this morning. I, I can see sunshine over there. Morning. You certainly can, Lou. Good morning, both, and good morning to you as well, Lou and Billy. Is it? Carol, thank you very much, though. Thank, thank you. you. Coming up to 22 minutes past six, for three decades, people with celiac disease, a problem with digestion which can lead to severe illness, have been able to claim gluten free staples like bread and pasta on prescription. But in some areas, health providers have decided it's time to reassess whether providing food, which is now widely available in most supermarkets, is really a wise use of NHS money, as Breakfast Jane McCubbin reports. And we'll talk about some of those issues in Jane's report with the chief executive of Celiac UK a little bit later in the programme. So, wondering, do you think the NHS should be offering gluten-free food on prescription? Uh, tell us what you think at... 
BBC Breakfast at bbc.co.uk for emails or share your thoughts with other viewers on our Facebook page. You can also tweet about today's stories using the hashtag BBC Breakfast or follow us as well for the latest from the programme. And still to come on that programme this morning. First, though, let's get news, travel and weather wherever you are. Good morning, this is Breakfast with Louise Minchin and Bill Turnbull. It's uh, just coming up to 6.30 on Tuesday the 18th of August. We'll have the latest news and sport in a few moments. And coming up on the programme later... All that's still to come first, though, this morning's main news for you. 10 million unnecessary prescriptions are written for antibiotics in England every year, according to the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. Nice. The UK's record low inflation could mean good news for rail commuters today. The official figure, published later will be used to determine how much fares can rise. For Bombers deliberately targeted foreign tourists when a device exploded near a shrine in the centre of Bangkok. That's according to Thailand's defence minister. Yes, more than 20 people were killed. 120 were wounded in the explosion. No group has as yet admitted to the attack. Well, our South East Asia correspondent Johnson Head was at the scene minutes later. He sent us this report. People in the Chinese city of Tianjin, whose homes were damaged by the huge explosions there last week, have staged protests to demand compensation from the government. Thousands of apprenticeships in England should be reserved for young people coming out of care, according to the children's charity Barnardo's. Three major record companies have agreed to join a government scheme to give age ratings to music video videos that have violent or sexual content. And the best city in the world to live in is... Not in this country. It's Melbourne. <laughs> Again. Teams, you would have to say. Um, Liverpool under a certain amount of pressure, but Bournemouth, I think this morning, you might feel slightly sorry for them because they didn't have the luck of the draw last night. And then oh, he fell at the end. Adorable. Brilliant. So congratulations see, to him and to the players for being so very kind and yeah, gentle. I hope he found his mum and dad. Yes, I'm sure he's fine. I, I, in fact, I know. He, he found his mum and dad, who I think Excellent. were probably very proud. Thank you. Um, it is uh, 6.39, you're watching BBC Breakfast. When a bomb exploded yesterday near a religious shrine in the centre of the Thai capital, Bangkok, it caused chaos and devastation. The blast forced people to flee in panic, quickly blocking a major intersection and hampering the emergency services. At least 20 people lost their lives, with more than 100 wounded. Well, the BBC's Marie Campbell is on holiday in Bangkok. She was in her hotel close to the scene of the explosion when it happened, and she joins us now on the phone. Marie, good, good morning. How are you doing? There now, it must have been a terrible shock for you and everybody else in the area. The BBC's Marie Campbell in Bangkok. We will have more on that throughout the programme this morning. Let's catch up on the weather, though, and Carol has a beautiful picture. I'm hoping for sunshine morning. Good morning, both, and good morning to you. It's a real giveaway, isn't it, Billy and Lou? Yeah. It will be that bit windier. Oh, thanks so much, Carol. See you a little bit later. Thank you. It's uh, just gone a quarter to seven. This is Breakfast. These are the main stories this morning. Uh, let's take a quick look at uh, some more of the front pages this morning. The Daily Mirror leads on uh, that terrible tragedy in Bangkok. Uh, that also makes front page of the Times as well, a picture just in the aftermath of that, uh, what they're calling that rush hour horror. Also, their main story there about rail passengers who will receive automatic refunds for late or cancelled trains under new government plans. Uh, ministers uh, want to stop people forced to jump through hoops to claim compensations amid fears that they are missing out as much, to 100, as, much as £100 million pounds a year. Uh, uh, the Daily Telegraph has a story about GPs and antibiotics. Political story. The drop out of the race. But yes. But nobody's actually doing it. Nobody this. is doing that, are they? Front page of the Daily Express. Uh, they're talking about pensions and cash in. Uh, this makes uh, the story the most of the papers this morning. Britain's Got Talents. Viewers will get a refund in that row over the winning dog. That's also front page of the Star as well. The Daily Star. Uh, the Independent has a story about car hacking. Tens of thousands of cars. And front page of the Sun. They've got an interview there with June Brown and reveals she is battling deafness just months after admitting that she is losing her sight. She's, of course, 88-year-old actress famed as Albert Square matriarch Dot Branning. Uh, the Daily Mail has a story about antibiotics. Uh, later in the program. We will indeed. Uh, lower food and fuel prices have kept the cost of living lower so far this year. It could also mean good news uh, for the price of rail tickets and commuters. Here's Ben. Uh, it could, yeah, the big question. Thanks so much. Morning to you. Morning to you too. Uh, you've probably heard that phrase linked to inflation and that's what they... At 9.30... 
Ben, thank you very much. See you later. Thank you. Nine minutes to seven. They may not be teenagers even yet, but the seven members of the indie band Pesky have been signed to the same record label that started Coldplay's career. Yes, and despite being uh, too young to go on tour, the group, all 11 or 12 years old, have been asked to play at a festival in the UK and their music has already been aired on BBC Radio 1. So here's our entertainment correspondent, Colin Patterson. And the good news is, because it's the summer holidays, mm. they are allowed to come and see us on BBC Breakfast later this morning. After nine. Right here uh, on Breakfast this morning, some more very smartly dressed young people. Yes. Look at these young performers. Can we see them? 